He should just walk out of camp. Oh, Odell? Yeah, he should just be like, all right, see you. All right, we're going to get to the... He's already there. I know. He should just leave. (laughs) He can't... He can leave. Really? You know, yeah. Wait, has that happened before? Uh, no, I mean, there's more. There's going to be more consequences to it, right? right? Because now they'll have the power to basically be like, oh, no, he left camp, and they'd be able to put him on, like, the NFI, but then uh, the non-football injury list or okay. whatever, they'll put something like that. Uh-huh. But what he then what he has to do is he stays, and then he just has he's got to hold in. He has to have a tight hamstring, hold tight in. hamstring hold in. every day. So it's when yeah. you go there and you can't run, right, you don't right. feel that oh, great. my hammy's tight, I can't yeah. play today. He's going to have to do that. All right, so hold on. So you play on – we're going to get to Black Klansman, right. John David Washington, and and of course. But you play Ricky Jarrett, which is kind of a diva wide receiver in ballers. Oh, diva. <laughs> diva. If you're Whoa. a receiver, you're a diva, John Whoa. David. Sorry. He, he's, yeah, I would he's, say that you're a self-aware diva. Yeah, okay. you, you had, you, in the show, you had a history of diva, but you go, I don't want to be that anymore. Like, I feel like that's your struggle well, all the time. Well, he's sensitive. Yeah. And not and not in like necessarily a weak way, but he just feels everything. You right. love this character. Every, who does? You do. Well, it is therapeutic. Yeah. You know, because I'm <laughs> like polar opposite of this dude. So like it is kind of therapeutic to, to be able to explore this guy and what he the, this crazy stuff that he does. So when you play a wide receiver, then do you look at Odell Beckham and can you see the character that he is? Uh, well, I mean, I just was able to collect a, a wealth of experiences of all different positions of, the, of throughout the years and just kind of combine it. You know, to me, it's about sharing the experience with the people that don't understand, that don't sure. know the perspective of the athlete. Right. Who you are know? the wide receivers yeah, who you served? Yeah, what was your compilation? I thought you were a little Jarvis Landry, yeah. but that's only because you were in Miami, so right, I put right. that together. Yeah. But I saw you, uh, maybe a little Antonio Brown in there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I was Steve, Steve Smith, Jerry Rice, a lot of the greats, but just other, like Randall Cunningham. He's, he's the reason I wanted to play football. Mm. I never seen anybody that looked like me at that position do what he did. I feel like he sort of revolutionized the, the position a little yeah. bit. Are and you an Eagles fan? Because he's an Eagles fan. Are you really? Oh my yeah. God, what? Are you serious? Did we I brought him best friends. I brought it. We were already best friends. Now we're besties. I had a. I brought a Brian Dawkins shirt. Did you oh. watch the Hall of Fame? No, I, I missed it. I seen some of this. I seen how he came out though, like the Wolverine style. Oh my style. God, yeah, I saw good. that though. That was cool. So uh, our man here uh, actually has the single game record at Morehouse, two hundred and forty two rushing yards. Is it still yards. standing? I thought that got, that's not broken. Oh, on the that, internet. It says it's still standing. Well, and the internet never lies. And career, nearly 3,700 rushing yards. It's pretty so impressive. So a man could tote the rock. I did all right. I did all right. Yeah. Well, uh, your dad, I mean, I got to ask you about him first of all. All right, first of all, thing is... Like, His dad is Denzel Washington. Being related to I, the, the hell with him. I like the top button. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, top oh, button swag. Hello, yeah. top button swag. Oh, sna- oh yeah, yeah. Okay. He gets hey, so much yeah. shit for the top button. How you doing? Why? I know. What? Well, because from, from a bunch of corny white people who don't know style. <laughs> it's not really true. that big of an it's issue. Don't worry. Why got to be white? Why just be people? <laughs> because <laughs> they're typically the people Seems that say to be something. The white yeah. guys oh, that say it. Sorry, they have more problems with other people. Yes. All right. So, but your love of football growing up. I mean, was dad the type of guy that had football on? Sundays and right. you were sitting there and that's that's how it happened. Yeah, that my pops, uncle, my my uncle Rick, on um, he lives in North Carolina. He loved the Green Bay Packers, Packers and the Celtics. He was a big Larry Bird fan. Right. So uh, yeah, it was always sports, but football. Yeah, football and, Sundays. And what about Dad? Who's Dad's squad? The Dallas Cowboys. He's the Dallas yeah, Cowboys. Oh, Cowboys. You what? So Thanksgivings <laughs> were serious what? at the house. Yeah, you got Eagles, Eagles, Cowboys, Cowboys right. Packers, all in the same all, house. Yeah, it's all NFC. We're keeping the NFC. Yeah, yeah. that's good. <laughs> I realized uh, earlier this morning that. You two have experienced opposite interactions your entire lives. Okay? Yes. Right. John David, people have come up to him his entire life and they go, Is your dad really that cool? And Chris, your entire right. life, people have come to you and go, Is your dad really that corny? <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Phil, Phil Sims, because <laughs> yeah. Phil Sims uh, is character. Is all, yeah. Uh-huh. I feel like you guys have had opposite interactions. Well, we definitely, life. I'm Impression. sure he could speak to this because his father is in a whole nother stratosphere of superstar than Phil Sims. Let's get serious here, okay? Because King know. Kong ain't got <laughs> nothing on him! <laughs> okay? Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I did recognize that early on that, he, yeah. he, I mean, every, I was Phil's son. That's yeah. I wasn't even Chris until I started to, like, but make every a game, name. Right. pressure was, like, Well, yeah, really... I didn't look at it as pressure. I almost looked at it as a, a chance to show off because I knew I was good and I was there like, oh, go. these people want to come here and you, you know see what Phil Sims' son got. I'm going to show them what I got. That's exactly how There's I seven three pointers later. Eat that crap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No so doubt. Yeah, yeah, you you were able to embrace it. Is that is that's where I was kind of well, going yeah, with it? Yeah. Well, I, I I sort of used it as this sort of like rebellious quest of independence. You know what I mean? And I was like like to your point of I'll show you. Yeah. 
you know, my, my father can't help me on the field. In fact, it, it would hurt me. They would be more motivated to try to hurt exactly. his own son. Yeah. So, Your dad's movie sucked. Right, right. I got Actually, you. No, believe it or not, they would compliment they the would movie. They would be. And tell you, you suck? It, 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 yeah, yeah, like me. Like, yeah. I still got to kill you, but, yo, Trinity, that's my movie. You know? <laughs> that's <laughs> like, awesome. Like, just got a first down. What are you doing? Man? That's so, awesome. Yeah, so it was a great a great motivator. I think it's what got me over playing with broken ribs and you know, torn meniscus and you know, a clavicle. Damn. A couple of concussions. So that motivation to be like my own man and right. making it on my, my own was was that was a part of that fueled it. Yeah, yeah. yeah certainly. Yeah. You did you were under at the free agent with the Rams. Yep. You played with the Rhine Fire. Oh, like, yeah, I, yeah. I loved NFL Europe. I loved it too. Mainly man. because when I would play Madden, there were you these six that? other teams. The other, you remember, yo. Yes. I don't want to date ourselves, but like, yeah, that was like, because <laughs> the worst thing Madden is, 95, what, what year was that? 95? I don't know. I think I somewhere in that, there. Though. It was like that. Yeah, yeah. I remember it on, on Sega Genesis. The worst thing, I'm talking about even on like the lower, like the early 2000s, the worst thing would be when you'd randomize the teams uh -huh. and they would get Packers and you'd get like, the Frankfurt, Frank, whatever. Yeah, yeah, Frankfurt Galaxy. So, what was yeah. what was the NFL Europe like? Uh, Alice Kla, it was uh, it was a great learning experience, both socially and as far as the game was concerned. Uh, they they loved us out there. Um, really? Yeah, yeah we had good times. Good, clean family fun. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure because your eyes only got like an inch or two wider when you said socially. <laughs> yeah, socially. Well, because that's what does that what mean? I've always that means heard. Food. Yes. That means the culture, concerts. I get you. <laughs> concerts. But, Wiener schnitzels. You but know? that's where you had a lot of fun, though, because I've heard yeah. that from a lot of, like, yeah, ex-players uh, yeah. and stuff that, you know, yeah, playing there was great, getting that experience, but being able to Living live there. there. Some guys didn't go back. Right, they just Some stayed. Some guys stayed there and started a family. Right. <laughs> yeah, so. Dude, I read about this guy that what they, they flew him out to Italy, and he was, like, the only NFL player that went to Italy, and he was just a legend. He's like, why would I leave? Like, wow. my family's in Italy. <laughs> we always hear about NBA players going abroad, right, but right. that was... I, I would like to see like the NFL expand again internationally and get these supplemental leagues going over there and raise the awareness of the, of the nature of the game and the purity of it. Yeah. And you can start that foundationally out there, I think, with a new whole new audience. All right, I mean, Germ I just want real quick, because yes. German, yeah. German fans, they're like organized chaos, right? Like Just like soccer, their football. Right. They stand, there's a section that stood up the whole game and chanted in unison. It was great. Yeah. You know? Damn. Yeah. Do you have any good Ryan Fire stories for me, like craziness? Like None that I can share with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't I don't even need it to be the party one. More like, oh. you know how like there's a team and it's coming together and it's like kind of haphazard. Like, what was it? Organized chaos? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we 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 would meet. We lived in the hotels. We met in the hotels. Uh, that was where the meetings were. We at the conference rooms or whatever. Yeah. So that was our lives, the hotels. But uh, we had a lot of time off too. They were like, well, we we got the meetings done. See you later. See you tomorrow. Damn. So, you know, there was a lot of freedom to get in trouble. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not like the NFL. No. It's, well, yeah, well, but but that's what you do. You get the free time, the free and that's time. where the young players always struggle because they're like, man, in college, I had to go do a study and, study right, hall right, and all right, that stuff. Right. You got all right. more money and more time. Exactly, yeah. which is a dangerous combination yeah. when you're 23 and 24 years right. old. You right. um, All right, I mean, of course, sports was your love, but you always kind of kept, like, acting in the back of your mind, knowing I, I didn't realize that was you and Malcolm X as oh, a little boy. I appreciate that, man. I yeah, did yeah, not yeah. realize that. I That's unbelievable. I was, yeah, I, was, no, I was six years old, man. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I, like I said before, too, this positive rebellion, so that, that meant I had to sort of bury my true passion and love, which was acting. Yeah. You know, I saw my father do Shakespeare in the Park when I was four years old. And uh, I, I loved it then. And in the movie Glory, I knew every line of every actor in that movie. And that's what, what I wanted to do. But in his ascension in, in the business, I, he was starting to get more popular, more recognized, and sort of this getting put on this sort of pedestal. When did it go to the next level in your dad in your life where in you were house, like, yeah. honestly, is it like Philadelphia? When is it? Uh -huh. When does it go Actually, next level like for your shout dad? Shout out to Spike Lee. I mean, Malcolm X sort of changed our life. That changed your life. I mean, security yeah. was necessary. There was some death threats going on. So, right. but even how I was getting treated, like I, I, I would. So some of that resentment and anxiety I got from different treatment from other people I, I sort of funneled that and, and used it as gasoline or fuel I should say into football but the whole time I was bearing what I really wanted to look really wanted to do but my parents are like artists like my mom went to Juilliard the classically trained pianist taught lessons at 11 years old 12 mm. years old so they were all about process right the art of it the craft the arts and crafts mm. of it all you know and that's what I fell in love with not the the result I mean it doesn't mean you're going to be famous or anything but that's not what we were about yeah that's not what they were about 
and uh, and so that kind of that kind of shifted when the, the popularity started happening. Right. Started raising. Damn. Right. So this movie, Black Klansman, you are Ron Stallworth, yeah. the first black detective in the history of the Colorado Springs Police Department, yeah. who outwitted David Duke with only a high school diploma. <laughs> uh, you're reading this right. character. Did you fall in love with it right away? Yeah. Tell us like the backdrop of the story a sure. little bit, just for the people listening and everything. Sure. I got a, I got a text. I was on location doing another film in Cincinnati. Shout out to Cincinnati too. Great food. Um, and uh, I got a text message from Spike Lee, like, "Yo, this Spike call me." I'm like, "Is this? Is this? I, I don't talk to Spike." A real on the phone. Spike Lee? Yeah, like, but I got, I got to investigate, like, just in case it is. So I, I kill like, "Hello, yo, John." He calls me John. I'm like, my name is John David. But I ain't gonna correct Spike. Yeah, uh, John. So I got this uh, black, this black detective. He called. He talked like real uh, in Colorado Springs. Takes down the Klan. The Klan. <laughs> Where you stand? <laughs> I'm like, so I'm, in my head, I'm like, all right, that's the elevator person. I'm like, man, this is like Dave Chappelle, right? This is something. <laughs> and uh, he's like a real book. So he sends me the book. I read it. I call him back, like, just like on cloud nine. Like, yeah. I'm just over the, through the roof. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Are you serious right now? What are we doing? He's like, all right, bet. See you this summer. So that's how I got the job. Damn. And, uh, you know, just a story like this, when it, it, it can only be told by Spike Lee with Jordan Peele as well as producing. And, and it was just, I couldn't believe it. And so, like, the book is way more detailed than the movie, but but the fact that this happened in our own backyard, it's an incredible, a, a credible true story. Uh, I mean, I got to ask a few more, like, about Spike. I mean, Spike, I look at Spike and almost think, like, okay, well, we talk about Bill Belichick and right. all the great things he does in the mm, world of yes, football and comparison. how he goes along his process. What was it like? What's Spike Lee as the coach of a movie? Right, right. Is he like hypercritical? Is he cool? Does he let you find your own way? What, what What's his process? Sort of all of the above. Like you'll catch some heat. Everybody, somebody would catch heat on set one day. Yeah. You but you got to get over it. You know you gotta you gotta you gotta have thick skin because it's all in service of the film. It's about the team concept. Never have I been on a set quite like this where everybody wanted to be there, seemingly want, seemed to be want, wanted to be there right. in service the film to the best of their abilities. And and the freedom I had. I mean, he trusted me. This legend, right? Yeah. Trusted me with this material, meaning he didn't, I didn't really get any notes. Like, you know, we do blocking stuff and positioning and camera stuff, a couple of adjustments. He would he would cut down what he didn't like, but he, he told me to trust your instincts, John David. Trust your instincts. You got this. It was great. So this legend yelling action and cut, trusted me with the information with this, with this project. I've never, it was such a liberating experience because... It's not always like that on set. Sometimes they got you in a box. Yeah. So so yeah. And, and expound on that. Expound is that the word? Expand. <laughs> Just expand. I feel like <laughs> I make up words. You gotta watch out. But no. But, elaborate. But yeah. Well yeah. I I, I guess uh, like when you say freedom too. I mean okay. So you got your lines to the movie, and he basically just says he he doesn't hold you to the letter of the law of every line. Right. Does he just let you kind of? Right. I mean, there was so much ad libbing going on. Right. Yeah. I think he's a master at at recognizing energy and momentum. Right. Like a lot of these great coaches, sometimes when Phil doesn't call a timeout, yeah. let them figure it out. Yeah. Right. You know, like that's that's you got to have confidence in your system and yourself, and then the people that you brought on the team. Right. So his confidence is in. Oh, I know who I I know I picked the right guy, Topher. He's the right guy. Adam, he's the right guy. Laura's the right woman. So that's where the confidence is. So he lets you do your thing. Right. Now we had discussions and if if we go way left, we'll we'll bring it back. Right. But never I never heard him once say, Can you try this way? Can you be funnier? Can you be those those generic notes sometimes are very frustrating as an artist because mm. it's because of that word. Yeah, generic. it's very generic. Yeah. yeah so yeah. but like in this case, with this story too, I, I mean, when he gave me that kind of trust, it just the confidence was just soaring, was just soaring through the roof. That's awesome. So it was, you know, it was just a flare, very fluid experience. Expound yeah. does play. Expound does play. It does yeah. play there. Express in a lot of detail. Okay, like, good. Like, good. I wasn't sure. Yeah. 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 We have one. <laughs> I've been told to use it less. Oh, <laughs> man. I, my, so you go through, and what's interesting is I've I've now heard your your father speak numerous times about his disdain for social media, mm. and. It's funny because you were talking before about how they're artists, and now I hear you speaking about the craft. Mm. And I think it's very funny that a lot of people in our society look past the craft and they look at the celebration and they go, I want the oh, celebration. But they're not, they don't see the process. Yeah. And part of the reason we love Bill Belichick and, and, you know, a lot of the great coaches in the NFL is it's all about the process. Yeah, yeah. And then when the celebration happens, they go, this is a result of that. Right. But a lot of people just want to lift the trophy. Are those worlds similar? Have you been able to bring football into acting, oh, or is absolutely. yeah, absolutely? I mean, pr preparation, sometimes superstition. You know, like same clothes, the same song. 
you know. So if you had a great acting day, you're wearing the same underwear <laughs> the next day. <laughs> not, not that, okay. but I'm definitely going. I'm definitely keep like I keep my uncle's car wash. Uh, bracelet on me, always nice. like right. that. Yeah, this so it's dealing with criticism. I'm sure that's oh, where football well helps. Right? Yeah, you Big must time. be great at that. Well, like, listen, I would run for 242 and a touchdown or two touchdowns, and this Denzel Sun ran for it. Yeah, you know right. What I mean? Damn, Denzel right. Sun makes the NFL. Denzel Sun makes the All Star. Yeah, so. I, you know, I, I, that kind of criticism or that kind of critiquing, I'm just at this You're point, numb I'm, to it. I'm well, impervious yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. Black Klansman, you are on set. You said that Spike Lee gives everybody one. One was the day that he gave it to you. <laughs> I think the, I think it was the second. It was the fourth day. Okay. But he did it in in not a way you would expect. So we it was it was I was kind of nervous that day. We had already been shooting a week, but it was like it was the most lines I've said from the script that mm. day. So I was a little nervous. So I, we we do it a couple times. He walks over, and he's not looking at me. He's like like if you're me, I'm Spike. He's like this. <laughs> so we're gonna bring the camera this way. You're gonna walk over and say it. Put some bass in your voice. <laughs> I was like, yo, <laughs> say what you chest. Yeah, uh, right. Like, yo, say like, put some. I love that, and I, I cracked up, and I was off to the races, man. I was, that was dope. So, so that's my version of like handed it to me, cause like, right. I did, like, like man up a little bit, like he or he could tell again. He just understands. And he didn't even look energy. at you. Either. He didn't even. That's the cold part. Yeah. He didn't even look. It was great though. Again, that Phil Jackson, yes. you know, Jedi mind trick. Yes. I was like, oh yeah, right. Let me get my stuff together, and it was great. Yeah, because it it's not about coming at you. It's about bringing the best out of you. Right. Well, and he some... just knows how to knowing how to communicate with your personnel. Uh, now, some people do need to just that kick, and you know, you gotta, you gotta yeah. yell at them. Others, you need to, you know, talk to them the way you talk to them. So. Damn. You, you um, I, I want to hear. Spike. Yeah, I want to hear the this what more about the movie itself too. Just, okay. as a, just so a, you want to know the concept, yeah, of the, the basic movie. concept, just to hear it because like I've seen a few commercials here and there, yeah, yeah. and I know the basic, but I want to hear that your voice. Your, yeah, I want to hear that. your. Yeah. I want to hear you now. Well, he doesn't. Okay, right. he doesn't. Ron never changed his voice. So if he was sitting here talking to you, that's how he was talking to the Klansmen, right? Which makes them even more like, how dare you be so civilized yeah, and calm? Right, exactly. I mean, David right. Duke talked about like like black people to say aura. Like it's there's a whole bunch of stuff in the film that you'll have to see but just diction and cadence like is dictated by the white man it, it, yeah. it, it's it's good old fashioned american hate yeah. you know mm -hmm. what i mean and how we see how organized it is in the forms of these organizations of the Ku Klux Klan and seeing how generational it is. We're you know, seeing it right now. Well, I was, he ties that all in, in the, into the film as well. I yeah. mean, the Klan has had resurgences they, from uh, Birth of a Nation, which played in the, um, the White House. Yeah. Then David Duke putting this nice neighborly white man who speaks, you know, these racial slurs. Right. So, right. And then Charlottesville, we'll Virginia. And now. All so that. all that's right. incorporated in the film. Now, He's not hitting you over the head though with messages like messages. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It, it's package and delivery is one of an entertainment capacity. It's something you can enjoy. You're almost reluctant or apprehensive to laugh. Like I don't even know why I'm laughing at that. But it's you're laughing at how ridiculous it yeah. is in these performances that he's getting out of the actors and the fact that the base, the backbone, the spine of this film is a true story. Yeah, we're mm. standing on history here. Right. So uh, it, it's it's such a unique film, one that uh, I'm proud to be a part of. I watch a lot of films, and I must say, I, I, I'm, even if I wasn't in it, I'd be. Be, I'm, I'm going to see this. Yeah, and I'm, I'm you're all the detective for it, that kind of finds out all the inner workings of the yeah, Ku Klux like Klan. The, the handshake, the like he he was monitoring the the Klan. Uh, that was that was the mission. It was a sting operation. Mm -hmm. So he he conducted he started the operation over the phone, and uh, he just started spitting these crazy racial slurs out. And hate was like, oh yeah, we like you. You speak in our language. I mean, what you're seeing in this film, I mean, with all the harsh language. Um, it's purposeful, and you're seeing this lexicon of hate, mm. you know, and it's sort of how, you know, some people, people speak French, bilingual, there's yeah. a hate language, and uh, and you, it's really displayed in this film throughout, and you're seeing, again, how generational it is. Some of these trigger words are still being used today, and we're also seeing, like, how people feel and talk at their family barbecue, mm -hmm. like, you know, at the local bowling alley. Sure. Yeah. This is how people feel and think in this country for years. Yep. That's what I was thinking when you were talking about Spike just letting people ad lib. That's the only way you really get natural speech. I agree. You know, because I think. Well, natural performance. Too. Yes. I mean, when you like, you got to do your prep work to earn that. Of course. And But when you're in it, like some of the best stuff you can't plan for. I mean, if, if I got an outside zone to the right and there's 300 pound. Uh, lineman that's in the way. I'm a, I'm a, I got to cut. I got to yeah. cut back, and that might be the touchdown. I'm not gonna just run into the guy. Right. So a lot of times, again, talking about what I got from football, right. you got to be able to to acquiesce. You got to be able to 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 work with and just feel it out. And that environment must be created by your coach. That freedom to do that. 
Spike Lee afforded us that freedom in such a major way. Did you see any acting chops thus far on Ballers? Have any of the NFL players impressed you with their abilities? Oh, well, uh, yeah. I mean, you don't see. have Steven to Steven Jackson up. in yeah. the pilot. Sure. He's talking about an elephant that he bought. Yeah, I got to go back. There was a, there, uh, uh, he talks about it. And that was ad lib. Again, Pete Berg. Who directed the pilot? He did uh, Friday Night Lights. I'm right. Yeah, we, we had, had him, had him here before. Oh, he did you really? Yeah. Oh, he is the man. He's, he's intense. funny as hell. Again, one of those coaches you love yes. to play yeah, for. Definitely. I love Pete Berg, man. Definitely. He was just like shouting us to talk about your elephant you bought. <laughs> and Steve was going with it. Steve Jackson was going with it. He was right there with us. It was great. Yeah, uh, Pete is the fucking man. We had a great is, time. He was cool as hell. Amazing, uh, we could have hung with Pete and yeah, just had a good right. time. Yeah. Um, does your dad call when you're in the middle of the movie do you ever call ask for hey dad i got this scene blah 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 i mean i know i wasn't above that yeah. as far as when i was playing or he might call me and be like christopher <laughs> that julius peppers is big make sure you step up in the oh, pocket you yeah. know yeah i'm glad i'm glad you said that i i uh yeah he we, he talked about working with spike and his experiences but i've been listening to his stories for years anyway even before this right and love when he talks about uh you know sometimes he says the same story and the, the kind of alternate versions, but uh, yeah, yeah. But that's it's all it's, that's, yeah, what dads, know, that's what dads like, do. Wait, you said seventy eight, now it's eighty two. Like what's, oh, you yeah. know, like getting the date wrong or whatever. But yeah, I ask them all the time. My my mom too though, because she remembers. Well, I remember Denzel when it, you know. So yes. So it's just getting that wealth of information. All right, and last one for me because I know you got a life and you have better things to do than the Sims and Left Go podcast. Right, it's a good time. Man. I am I am interested in this. I want to know what your what's your what's your favorite movie of your dad's. And then what's the movie you believe he acted best in? Which is like his best performance? And then what's your movie that you go, damn. What was Phil Simms' was best the, performance? Uh, Super Bowl twenty one. He was 22 of 25 <laughs> for 269. Yo, you see how we, wow. Three TDs. Was, oh, look at him. 88.1%. Yo. You have no idea. <laughs> I can't do it. Like, I don't have it on command. I'm going to say Virtuosity. No, I'm just kidding. Was, uh, <laughs> I, I like, come on. Like, you come had on. me going. Virtuosity. No, I, I, uh, uh, I mean, I, I love. There's so many good ones. Crimson I know. Crimson Tide, Man on Fire. Oh man, Crimson Tide. He was coaching me. I was me, Sunshine. You didn't know that? <laughs> no, 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 no. You're thinking of. Yeah. Uh, you're thinking of the oh, Tides. I'm thinking of Remember yeah, that yeah. Crimson Tide is was in the submarine, whoa. which I also saw as well. Whoa. Whoa. And I was a lefty sunshine. like Sunshine too. I, I, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Uh, did you get that? You got that a lot. Did you get I w well, the night before we played Oklahoma at Texas, we went to see that movie. Oh, right. Uh, and the team started going, Sims! Uh, as soon as he started playing, that's Sims! <laughs> so, yes, I did get that. You were Damn, sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry I messed up that movie. I saw Crimson Time no, as well. Yeah, I mean, with he and Gene Hackman, that Put him in his house, place. I mean, yeah. it was like like Gene hit him like twice. Yeah. And pops, but, like, you still look like, I, I don't know if I could pull that off. You could still look like a G after you got stolen on twice. Right. And, and he pulled that off. But I, it was, I loved he and Tony Scott's uh, chemistry. And Man I love Fire him. was amazing. I was one of those. I mean, I watch it. I watch it every year. Like uh, Tony Scott had that run with like Domino and Man on Fire, where yeah. it was just the cuts and the flashbacks yeah. and the and how still, aggressive that kind it of was. that style of filmmaking is getting used today. Yes. He was ahead of his time, really. And uh, so I mean, I, I, he and Spike combination of uh, Malcolm X is one of my. See, I can't. I, that yeah, was, it's hard. It depends on what month. I know. know yeah, I hear you. You know what I mean? This month right now is Malcolm X, but a month ago it was Man on Fire. A month yeah. before that was Crimson Tide. Month before that, it was uh, what's the uh, training day? So yeah, training uh, day is much probably about the most nothing. I love quoted that one movie. What is your favorite movie of all time, Sims? My favorite movie of all time is probably The Godfather one and two. Okay, one so, and two. Yeah, 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 one and two. I can almost count them as the same two. thing. Right, yeah, right, right. but yes, yeah. yeah, they were that. That is that is one and Coming two. Coming to for America me. is probably one of my favorites. It's too. up there. I could watch that. Always. It's up there. Yeah. Yep. Mine is uh, Ace Ventura 2 and Nature Calls. Oh, nature. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. What were you saying? The like jungle? That, yeah, that, yeah, was, yeah, the, yeah. that was the fake smile. Like, you're <laughs> an idiot. He said like a glove. <laughs> you're He's an, an Eagles idiot. fan and he knows <laughs> lines from Ace Ventura 2. <laughs> oh, I got him on break. Didn't he because say like your glove in the month? I think, I think the problem like is when you ask someone, uh, damn. Yeah, I think he did. He, no, he makes like it. Guys, he parks in one and yeah. goes like a glove. No, I think he that's says the it again. Into, no, he, I mean, because the thing one. flips and it lands. But he said it in one. Film. That's where it started. Damn, Damn. Sorry. very good. My thing very though good. is when you ask someone what's your favorite movie, I always feel like they're trying to impress you, and they don't give the movie they want to watch the most. They give the one that's like been also Yo, critically that's acclaimed. That's they're point. like, oh, I love uh, Dances with Wolves. Oh, by the way, I, that's one of my favorites. Dances with Wolves. one of my favorites. Like, are you kidding me? Like, that's my. Come on, man. So we do a thing during the season when we're, we have to bet on games, and I've beaten him now for four years in a row, even yeah. though he played and is a professional. Uh, I'm a better gambler. <laughs> and what happens is sometimes mascots come up. 
Okay. And we were doing the bills, and he just kept going, Tatanka, Tatanka. <laughs> and I had never seen it, and I was like, this oh, guy's losing oh. his mind. Oh, yeah. And then the when I saw it, right. yeah, yeah. It, it really is great. It's, it's great another movie, movie that, that makes you hate white too? people. Oh, yes. Hate white people. Yes. It does. You're just like, you ruin everything. <laughs> yeah. just, they have a civilization, and they're not harming anybody. <laughs> right. And they're literally dancing with animals. Yes, they I are. Know. They have intertribal wars. They over, they were hurting each other. Yeah. But, let this, so, I mean, but we didn't have to kick them out and exterminate them. I mean, that's why we went too far. No, I'm not saying that. Yeah, I'm not deciding with the... Can't no, believe you, John we Dan, are deciding <laughs> with just like westward expansion. Black Klansman thing is not <laughs> real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breaking oh, news. Man. Spike, what were you thinking? <laughs> uh, this was fun. I had a good time. Yeah, thank you You're a good dude. Thank you. Uh, you are a good dude. I wanna, how did you watch the Super Bowl? Oh, how did I? So, I, like, yeah, what was your setup? So that whole, uh, I watched it by myself because I was too good emotional. I couldn't be with it. I no. couldn't interact with people. I, you know, I, I was focused. And the whole playoff run, I, did, I never watched the first quarters. So that, how did that about, happen? You just missed the first I one. You're like, now it's a the first, Yeah, and then yeah. they were. I was like, you know what? Because I was, I was a little nervous about. about of course, the, yeah. about the about big Nick moment. Falls. I was a little nervous. He was I'm little, sorry, Falls. Yeah. My bad. We believe, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, and then it just and it worked. He missed practice today. Did he? He's tight in the upper body. It says. It's okay. It's just like, you know, oh, you got screwed. Foles it's over. In a great position right now. I didn't see Coming off the win, no pressure. He can just hold the clipboard, right. chill, till. It might be time again. I say I play Foles the first three weeks of the year. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I don't uh, know about yeah. that. Yeah, you because know, here's the reason. Why? The reason that you keep Foles is so that we don't have to rush back Carson Wentz. Carson, you're at like 85. Guess what? We have Nick Foles. He'll be fine the first few weeks of the year. They're both. They're both men of God, and they both really respect each other. I don't think there's going to be any issue. Mm -hmm. And when Carson's ready, you bring him in. I think we have the rare opportunity to give him a longer runway. If he's 100%, let him play. But if you're kind of not sure about it, that's why you have Nick Foles. Like, I think this is a benefit, not a deterrent. All the TV shows are going to say, who do you play? Pick one. I say play both. Like I just but, I, but, but, like given the history of this league, when has it ever worked a dual quarterback? In the, no, in the almost league? never. That's why I don't. I mean, I know what he's saying. I, I get you. I get it. You too. know, but they're just you're you're if he is close to playing Wentz, they almost have to play him. If, if you, you guys start, if you start out three and zero with yeah. Foles, that's then the, that's, you might as well just try to trade Wentz and go with Foles in the future. There are the issue, right? easy right. games too. Like right. they so got the Bucks everyone's without like, Why would we bench Foles? We're three and zero. And you know the coaches might be like, well, he was playing average, but you know the fans don't really know that because we won, and yet he's still going to have to play. And you can sort of blame even if he's not one hundred percent actually benefits the franchise. Like they can blame like well, he still wasn't quite ready. Right. 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 So they can play that angle, even if it's for mental purposes. So Super Bowl, you watch by yourself. Watch by myself. I didn't even eat. <laughs> I, did. I was like, this is historic. Like I'm, yes. a, you know, I grew up. We we could never get past that hump. You know, can never get over the hump. So I'm just getting like the Reggie White days and the Fred Barnett and just yes. all these names were just in, in this history of. I met Randall Cunningham. He gave me his glove. He told me I could be anything I want to be. I appreciate that, Randall, because I'm doing that. I'm doing it. Do you Randall. guys realize you both had a Randall moment? I'm a huge Randall guy. Too. So he, you had a Randall moment at the Pro Bowl. Yeah, Randall well, was my him. guy. Well, he kept every time my dad played him back in the late '80s, early '90s, right. he'd turn the corner and have a big run, or <laughs> yeah. or Carl Banks would knock him on the ground, and he'd stiff on the ground and pop up. So he'd do this stuff like you said to start the interview. You, where I would go, damn! I've never seen quarterbacks do this never. shit. I've never seen anybody outrun Lawrence and Taylor what around did he the give edge. You at the Pro Bowl. So at the Pro Bowl, I was obsessed. I wasn't. It was a quarterback challenge. Oh yeah. And I, I, I was obsessed with oh, him. Oh yeah. And he was so nice and yeah. cool as hell. And you're how old? And I'm 11. And I was like, damn, Randall likes me. We're buddies. And I just started following him everywhere in the hotel <laughs> and like everywhere. <laughs> so and he, uh, he so couldn't dope. get rid of me. He was like, get this fucking yeah, kid away from dope. me. Yeah, I would do the same uh, thing. <laughs> but he couldn't have been better. And there was the year he got hurt, and everyone was like, you got to change the way you play right. and right. when we left the uh, quarterback Drew challenge i got home when yeah you... it was right around that time right. he sent me all this stuff of like all his like uh randall i'll be back running gear wow. hats t-shirts water bottles wow. yeah randall's the man dope. So you both were blessed by Randall. He did not give me the glove. (laughs) (laughs) No. Just saying, it was pregame. It was warming up. He gave me the glove. My dad's Phil. Your dad's Denzel. You win. What do you mean? You win. You win the league. Like, you had the whole. I know. I know. You had the access. You following around the hotel. I didn't get none of that. (laughs) (laughs) He didn't want none of that. I can tell you that. (laughs) That's awesome. John David, you're the man, dude. Congratulations on anything. Check out Black Cat Klansman. It is going to be all over every movie theater, pretty much. And then also Ballers. It's now, what, the third season? Fourth. Fourth Fourth season. HBO, we appreciate it. Yeah. Dwayne. We're family. Yeah. We're all under the same umbrella. That's right. We just got... Yeah, Time Warner. Yeah, we always were before AT&T. We <laughs> yeah, were with HBO. Right. What's up, AT&T? <laughs> so they You're the man, the checks. They couldn't the check. Yeah, they Keep are. Keep kicking ass. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. All right.